So that's what identities are. Um, I mean, it sounds funny saying equal and identical. Don't, don't those, aren't they equivalent statements? Answer, no. Mathematically, they mean different things, okay? So let me show you how you need to set out a proof of an identity. Okay. So let me show you how not to prove this, okay? Because showing you how not to prove it, first, we'll give you a bit of instruction on how to prove it, all right? Your instinct, whenever you see something like this, is that looks like an equation, does it not? This equals this. It's not an equation. It's an identity. Any value of theta you throw in there, it will be true. Okay? So therefore, I mean, to be helpful, we should really say this, but all the time you'll see it equal sign there. So you need to be familiar with the fact that this is an e not an equation. It's actually an identity, even if it doesn't look like that. Okay? Now, here's the thing. When you've got an equation like this, right, your instinct is to just use that as your first line and then start working on it. Right? So in this case, you do x squared minus 9 equals 0, and then you factorize, and then you read off your two solutions. No problems. Okay? But if you take the same approach here, you run into trouble, or at least you look like you run into trouble. So if I expand this left-hand side, okay, that's what I get. It's just difference of squares. And then I do the right-hand side. By now, you kind of ought to be able to recognize that left-hand side, right? If you were to replace this one with sine squared plus cos squared, because that's the Pythagorean identity, it would be sine squared plus cos squared minus sine squared. So all you are left with is cos squared. Okay. So at this point, you're like, sweet, that's true, so I'm done. Okay? Except you're not, because that's wrong. Okay? Why is this wrong? Mathematically, I haven't done anything wrong. Like, I went from here to here, and it's true. I went from here to here, also true, right? So the logic holding this together is fine. The problem is, I used this as my starting point, right? Why is it bad? Why can I not use that as a starting point? Yeah, let's see. It's just you're trying to get that solution. Good, yeah. Um, I'm going to come back to that. Do you want to say something different right now? Um, you're assuming that the statement is true. Good, okay, and both of those are saying exactly the same thing from different sides, right? So let me say Min Su's again in another way. I, I started with this, right? I can't start with this. I'm supposed to end with this, okay? So that can't be the first line, it's gotta be the last line, right? I've got it completely backwards, which is another way of saying, look, you're meant to prove this. The burden of proof is on you. It's like walking into a legal court and you're the, um, you're the defense and you're like, well, everyone, Assuming that my client is innocent and then going on and concluding all these things. It's rubbish, right? You can't use that as your basis. Okay, yes? Are you telling me I did my entire homework last night wrong? Possibly. All right, so instead, <laughs> let me show you how you should set it out. Now, this is my yes. Okay, I've deliberately chosen a very simple question. Okay, so it won't take me long. And you will see, mathematically, one, two, three, it's going to look almost exactly the same. <clears throat> Almost exactly. Yeah, it's just a minor subtle difference in how it's set out. Okay? But being that it's a proof, a proof is an argument, right? Well, the way you set out an argument really matters. Here's the way I do it. I look at these two things. There's a left-hand side to this, and there's a right-hand side. Okay? Now, usually, terms and conditions apply. I'll come back to that in a second. Usually, one side is much worse and much more complicated than the other side. And most people's brains work in, like we've practiced at simplifying things, not making them more complicated. So you pick the more complicated side, and then you think about how you can simplify it in order to get to the other one. Okay? And you can choose. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm going to choose the left-hand side. Okay? I'm going to write it out word for word, character for character. And then I'm going to start working on it. Now, because it's so simple, there's not really many other places I can go. I'm just going to expand. Right? I'm going to go, that's cos squared. And now I'm going to say, aha, now I have arrived at what I was supposed to arrive at, the other side. Right hand side, therefore, it's true. Done. Okay? So this, mathematically, like, it's all the same, okay? But the way I've presented the argument is very different. Question? Do you have to put a conclusion statement saying it's true, or can I just say that as it? No, not really. I, I think once you've gotten to here, everything that was being assessed has been assessed. I just kind of said that as a ending rhetorical flourish, but yeah, that's, that's all you need to do, okay? All right, now, um, wait, before I move on, are there any questions about that? Any questions? Okay, now I did say 
I did say terms and conditions apply, okay? One of the reasons why students around the country really like this approach, right, is because occasionally you'll have a left-hand side, which looks really gross and complicated, so it looks like a, a nice place to start, and then you have a right-hand side, which is equally gross and complicated, and you're like, I have no idea how I'm gonna go from there to there, and I have no idea how I'm gonna go from there to there, okay? So I'm like, I'm just stuck. Okay, so I don't know which side to start from, or I can start on one side and get somewhere, I simplify as far down as I can, and then I hit a brick wall. I just don't know what identity I should use. And I know like 15 of them, and I just don't know how to combine them. Okay, so if you get this situation, here's what I encourage you to do. Um, because it comes up quite a lot, particularly if you are fortunate enough to get a trig identity question at the end of your paper, and it's one of these twisty ones worth three or four marks. Okay, you're gonna have this, right? Prove. Left hand side equals right hand side, okay? And they're both gonna look really gross, okay? In this case, what I would do is I would start left hand side equals and simplify it as much as you possibly can. And you would get down to some point, like you should be able to do something with it, where you're like, okay, I I I've stopped. I've got a, um, you know, I can't go any further. I don't know what else to do and I'm running out of time. What are my other options, okay? At this point, over on the right hand side of your page, hmm, see what I did there? On the right hand side of your page, look at the other side, okay? And start to work on it. If this identity is true, then if you simplify this as far as you possibly can, and you simplify this as far as you possibly can, often you will end up at the same thing, right? On both sides here, okay? Now that's not the proof, you're not finished. You then have to take what you've gotten to over here. Suppose you end up with something like, um, oh, I don't know. Suppose it's really, really complicated, but all you end up with is a sine squared, okay? And then over here, you end up with a sine squared, okay? Then what you need to do is take these steps over here and just write them in reverse, because that will take you, sure enough, one, two, three, for whatever number of lines to the right hand side because that's where you came from, right? So again, it's, it's doing this kind of thing but it's applying the logic to both sides independently, okay? That's the way I would recommend if you really hit up against the brick wall and you don't know what to do.